pressure! Too much! Amazing. Who explodes? Oh, my grandma! Pretty big fan of yours. Did you go say hi to her? Oh man, it's the Vault Hunter! You are awesome! Didn't you fight Terramorphus? I fought a big creature like that once. He was a big whale squid with a hundred tentacles. You ever thought anything with tentacles? Oh, of course you have. Terramorphus had tentacles, how silly of me. Now, where was I? I am so sorry. Uh, where are you going? Oh, <laughs> never mind. You don't want to hear my story anymore. Now where was I? I am so sorry! 
All right, the whale creature. His name was Blowhole the Apocalypse. I called him the Apocalypse for short. And he attacked my hometown of Tsunami's Edge when I was but a little girl. You ever been to Tsunami's Edge? Great town, nice beaches, great food, and the cost of living is just so low. Even being a single grandmother and working part-time in a scat meat processing factory, I was still able to provide for little Mr. Torg. We may not have been able to afford the finer things in life, like food, but we got by. After all, Mr. Torg and I didn't have anything but one another after that horrible gas leak blew up the iridium mine, killing my son and his lovely wife. From that day on, when my little Mr. Torg vowed to conquer explosions themselves in an effort to avenge his fallen parents, and... Ah, oh man, I forgot what I was talking about. Where was... All oh, right, the blowhole, the apocalypse! So anyway, I was wrestling blowhole to the ground, and I have my bicep curled around his blueberry throat. Blueberry? Sorry, I meant to say blubbery. I've got blueberries on the brain, I guess. I grow them in my backyard. Mr. Torg helped me plant them. Thanks again for that, grandson. I love you, Grandma! Anyway, I have my bicep around his blubbery throat, and Mr. Torg starts crying because he really likes whale squids, and he doesn't want to see me hurt one. They are the princes of the ocean! So I let the whale go after giving it a punch in the eyeball so he'll remember me, and it swam away into the ocean. And then I had Mr. Torg drive me to the ice cream parlor. He got me Rocky Road, because Rocky Road's my favorite. I'm extremely partial to the way the marshmallows act like little landmines of flavor amidst the battleground of chocolate. What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Is it pistachio? I bet it's pistachio. Oh, that reminds me! You'll never guess who I saw today! Pistachio the Amazing! He's a magician who studied under Crazy Earl, so he's got that weird mustache, you know, but I saw him make a rack hive disappear. A whole rack hive! I said to Mr. Torg, I said, Mr. Torg, wasn't that amazing? And he said, yes, it was, Grandma. Didn't you say that, High Five? You remember saying that? I remember, Grandma. And we stood in line afterward and got his autograph, and I thought I had it somewhere around here, but it's probably in the attic. I really ought to go up there and clean it out one of these days. I have so many little keepsakes up there. Are you... You're paying attention, right? Hey, what's my favorite flavor of ice cream? Oh, so you are listening. How wonderful. You're an even better listener than my old pet rack, Bisto. Bisto was such a sweetie. You ever had a pet rack? If you can tame them, they are the sweetest pet you'll ever have. He used to just sit on my shoulder and bite chunks of flesh out of my neck to pass the time. I still remember the way he used to tweet. He went, tweet, tweet. <laughs> it was so cute. I had a conversation with him once. I said, Mr. Beasto, he liked being called Mr. Beasto. It made him feel like an aristocrat. I said, Mr. Beasto, you're looking very cute today. And he said, oh, thank you. That's so nice. Or he tweeted in a way that made me know that's how he felt. And then he lowered his little head like he was taking a bow. It was adorable. Beasto was my third pet rack. First I had Woody. He got hit by a train. Then I had Anita. She got shot up trying to take vengeance on the train that killed Woody. And then I found Beasto making little poops on the windmill outside our house. After Mr. Torg and I wrestled her to the ground, I did a flying pile driver off a nearby tower tree. Got him straight in the spine and brought him down. We brought him in and fed him some skag steaks until he decided he loved us. I still miss Beasto sometimes. He just died of old age. Rack don't live much longer than a few years, but I treasured the time we had together. Oh, poor Mr. Torg. When Bisto died, he cried for a week. The kids made fun of him at school, but I told him not to pay them any mind. Being in touch with your emotions is not a character flaw! That's right, High Five. Is something wrong? You look confused, Vault Hunter. Oh, you probably haven't heard anyone call Mr. Torg High Five before. The world may know him as Mr. Torg, but the Flexingtons always refer to him using his middle name. It's a Flexington family tradition, after all, to use your grandfather or grandmother's name as your own middle name. And my husband, High Five Flexington, God rest his soul, was the best grandfather Mr. Torg could have asked for before he passed. He taught Mr. Torg dang near everything he knew about firearms. Without High Five's teachings, I don't think the Torg Corporation would exist at all. Gosh, 
I still remember the first gun Mr. Tor tried to make after his parents died. A Jacob shotgun with a stick of dynamite attached to the barrel. Torg nearly blew his face off, but he got up, dusted his mustache off, and swore that by the time he reached the age of 11, he would make a gun that fired explosions without killing the operator. And by golly, he did! It took a couple of dozen prototypes before he got the right combination of gun parts and explosives, right? But once he did, woo-wee! I'll never forget the plume of smoke that used to be my neighbor's homestead. They were jerks, though, so it's okay. Gosh, I've been talking your ear off for some time, haven't I? It's so kind of you to listen for this long. I've taken up too much of your time already. Please, don't feel like you have to stick around any longer. As a matter of fact, take this for giving this old woman some comfort. You're even more attractive than Mr. Torque said you were. I've got another story for you, but I'd like to tell it to all of your friends.